Hello and welcome to our next topic. This is our next topic, so-called PRI sensor. P R R. This standing for photoelectric. infrared sensor yeah photoelectric infrared sensor pure sensor yeah. commonly known as movement sensors i think if you only look at this part you probably notice very very soon yeah. this is how it looks like there is a dome and on the on the back we do have some connectors. There are two, there are two potentiometers. One is the sensitivity, and one is the delay time. You see, there is quite a lot of a lot of uh, there's quite a lot of electronics already on board. This is because these PRI sensors they need quite some some stuff to to get some data out of it. So let's open it. Let's have a look under the hood. We can just remove the cover. This here. This is the sensor. Yeah. Typical semiconductor sensor. Yeah. And here we also have the, the pin, the pin, connections pin. Yeah. There are the connection pins. You see, and there is also written on uh, how they are connected. VCC is power supply, yeah? then there is a data pin, and then there is the ground pin. Yeah? So this one, this one here is plus, the other one is minus, and in the middle, this is ground. Yeah? And the cover, the cover here. This is just some lenses yeah, to get to get data or 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 heat from everywhere. Why I say heat? Because actually, this is what the sensor is measuring. Yeah. This sensor is measuring heat, and not only heat, it measures changes in heat. Yeah. So we do have heat change. Actually, it's a change of infrared radiation, yeah? heat change, switch. Yeah? So, this is why a wind is not triggering our movement sensors. Yeah? This is why wind is not triggering movement sensors. It must be some living thing changing, changing the temperature in the room. Okay? And then, after some time, this effect is gone. So if you if you stand still and the heat in the room is not changing at all, yeah, then the effect is gone. Yeah. This is why it's just a movement. Yeah. If we move, then we are at another lens here, and it works. It will trigger again. Here we can adjust the sensitivity. Yeah, between around 3 meters and around 7 meters, so the sensitivity of the sensor in there. Here we can adjust the delay time yeah, from short to high. And this jumper here, this jumper here, this is this is single, single trigger. So if now something is changing in heat, it will trigger and will set the pin the data pin to high as long as I've adjusted here. Okay. If then the heat is changing, this will not re-trigger. Yeah? This will just beat the delay time and then it will get off. And then it's ready for a new trigger. So this is one shot and this is the other possibility is this. This is re-trigger. Yeah? So every time something changes, the time begins from start. Yeah? So, this one, 
we are using. We will then just connect. Let's open it. We will connect simple ground to the Arduino ground. Then we will connect VCC to plus 5 volt and we will connect out. That's a digital output. So we will just use, I don't know, pin number 2. This is how we are going to connect things. And this is the next thing which will happen. So let's start with the hardware. I can use this one. So we have here somewhere plus. Use again white. Gray I use for data and black I use for ground. So our sensor is connected. Here we have plus 5 volts. Here we have ground. And here we have on input pin number 2. That's it. That's our setup. We'll move it like this because then we can see it. And let's power it up. Bim, bim, bim. Wunderschön. Let's make some coding. New program. Save on the name. Which one do we have already? 38. Wow. Peer sense. Save. Okay. What we have is we have, of course, an ampere input. Input. This is pin number two. Then we have to select the pin mode. Pin mode. Uh, we use this peer input as an input. I don't need pull up because all those necessary things are, are there. And I will use the internal LED to display if I trigger the peer sensor or not. Okay, so I will use pin mode LED built-in built-in yeah, this is an output. Mm, now we are back to to just digital right like in the beginning digital right LED built in low. Now it should be out. Good. And now let's let's make a one liner. Yeah. We will make digital right. LED built in. Yeah. And what do we want to write? We call it digital read. Digital read. What we are reading in from this peer input. Isn't it great? One line. <laughs> of course, it would be more. Here you see, it's a pretty, pretty simple program. We read something in and we we control the LED with this read in value. So it's rather simple. It's rather simple. But uh, uh, it is not 
we cannot read it quite as well. So maybe maybe it would be a good idea to use a variables once in a while to make the code readable yeah? and let it up to the compiler what he can do about it. Yeah? But just a suggestion. Upload. Hmm. So I adjusted the sensitivity and the delay time very, very low, yeah, the lowest possible setting. If I'm moving my hand now, you see it switched. Switched. And I have switch. If I'm constantly moving, it will always turn off. Okay. Now I change the setting of the jumper, zack, zack, to continuous trigger. Now I move. Need to reboot the sensor. You see, this time it stays on. That's the difference. I always trigger the sensor, it will stay on. If I don't not nothing, it will turn off. Yeah? If I set the uh, trigger again to also repeat, I uh, reboot it. Five volt. And now I do exactly the same like before. You see, it turns off always. That's the sense, the sense of this, of this jumper. And here you could adjust the sensitivity and the the delay time, how long it is on. However, I suggest to do the delay time. In the program, yeah. then you're independent of this hardware setting here. Okay. The thing, what we do here, yeah. you see, there's a dead time until it reacts, it newly reacts. This is typical. This is typ typical. Try to make some changes. Try to make some changes in the code. Huh? that this off this 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 dead time this instead of insensitivity is not noticed huh? this thing also applies if we change it to re-trigger huh? if we change it to re-trigger Make it bigger for you. Off, off, start. See, it takes a while until it recognizes me. And then, or I do nothing. It's off now. I wait a little time. And now I move. It suddenly appears. Yeah. So there is a delay time of the sensor, which the sensor needs some time to turn back on. Okay. Normally this is not noticing, you will not notice it, but we can handle this in software as well, yeah, that we do not see this dead time. Come up with a solution for that. This is how it should look like. Trigger it, wait until it's off. Immediately re-trigger and it's it's working perfect. Yeah, so I wait here to make it as quick as possible. You see, there is no pause. It simply turns on as quick as before. Working. Okay, this is what you should achieve. That's it for our Arduino starter kit. We will use. 
some other parts in in communications parts uh, there we will we are going to use uh, a real-time clock as an example and we are going to use uh, we are going to use a communication between two Arduinos so we'll try to make some chat okay. this then in the interfaces and communication part of this course for the Arduino starting we are pretty much done you do have some other hardware inside however you also have a CD the other hardware this is not that that I would not say not that interesting but it's rather easy to control it yeah it's rather easy there is one exception this is this uh, gyroscope yeah. however uh, you can try if you want but that's not part of this course here okay so next thing would not be Arduino beginners curse next thing would then be interfaces and communication curse okay. for this curse thank you very much for listening for this chapter and yeah hopefully we hear us next time goodbye